Um, this panel is something I, an idea I came up with uh, roughly about uh, nearly a year ago when I uh, contacted Colleen Murphy, who is uh, a, uh, is a union representative or a business agent, business representative of uh, the union at Electrolux, the International Association of Aerospace and Machinists. You know? uh, and this is uh, something, uh, the reason why we uh, first uh, met each other or contacted each other was because I was interested in doing a research project as, as, one, as one of the researchers in our research group on the war conditions that Somalis face in St. Cloud and also that they've faced since they arrived in the United States and the way in which that shapes their experience and also the degrees of citizenship that they're able to attain in this community and also the way in which that shapes, if you will, the level of or the kinds of conflict and that they had to deal with in St. Cloud. Um, I'm very interested in doing this because I'm very interested in the immigrant, in, in immigrant issues in terms of how immigrants are shaped by the kind of labor conditions that they face when they arrive in this country. And since almost all immigrants who arrive here, unless they're millionaires, uh, uh, once they arrive here, whether they're political refugees or whether they're arriving here as, uh, as it were just looking for work, uh, the fact is they look for work and that shapes their experience here. Um, one other thing I was very interested in terms of this putting a panel like this is kind of overcoming this kind of, if you will, over-focus on the cultural differences between the Somalis and the rest of the population in St. Cloud and trying to find a commonality, uh, which is, of course, work. Uh, that uh, immigrants work just like the rest of the population works. Uh, it's what we all have in common. And one thing I was very interested in with regard to Electrolux is also the way in which Somalis have become involved in their union and the way in which becoming involved in the union has shaped their experience both at work and in, in their lives in general. And also I was very interested in the way in which their lives as a result of being in a union differs from other Somali immigrants that they know who are working in industries that do not have a union. Uh, with that in mind, I thought the best people, of course, to do this job would be uh, Somali workers at Electrolux who are in the union, involved in the union, and are able to speak uh, very eloquently to this question far more eloquently than I am. Uh, so with that in mind, I've in, we've invited uh, two workers from Electrolux who are also union stewards. Uh, the first one is Abdikani, uh, Abdikani Dari, and the second uh, panelist is, I think it's also Colleen Murphy, the business representative of the union. Uh, that's another word for the organizer, basically, and also negotiator. Uh, and I don't have much more to say other than uh, that. Uh, I'm very pleased that we can have these two gentlemen here. Uh, they have to go to work very, uh, very shortly, but they very willingly give up some of their free leisure time uh, to come and talk with us about their experience in a union as immigrant workers. Thank you. I just want to explain to you about a little bit about the steward and what we do there in Electrolux. A steward is just a, an employee maker, an employee like me, that they have a job to do every day and they answer to the same management that we, we do. The key difference, though, is that the union steward has a training and the course of production to help other employees solve problems at work. been trained by the union and had special legal protection to enable them to act for employees when the management is not responsible. First thing is representation. We represent the, the employees when they like no when when we you think that you are in trouble as employee when you think that you're in trouble if you have a meeting with the management that you believe that events even temporarily interview with a possible purpose taking disciplinary action against you, you have the, you have the right to have the union steward at that place. That means sometimes when you're calling the office, you cannot just go in there and do 
whatever you are told to do, you have to go to the union to present it to see what because that's why we are there to represent the employees. Second, uh, the, 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 first, the second thing is that the communication. The steward will make sure to inform the members about what is going in the union by handing out the information, putting information on the union public board and simply taking so talking to the people, play the role of feeding the ideas and the issues back into the other parts of the union, such as the staff and the executive board. Third thing we do is the education. A steward will work to make sure workers understand the work, their, their rights, the contract and any important issues that the union is working on. I know, like for us as employee directors, the most thing, the most important thing that we, we got from the union is that some other employees, like let us say those who are working junior Turkey or or they don't have a union. Mostly, they have a lot of problems. Like sometimes when they are in trouble, they have no one, nowhere to go or no one to help them over. Especially during the holidays. They have to work the first week of the holiday, like six days or after the end of the holiday, the second week they have to work for six days in order then to cover the holiday that they have been paid. But in a lot of us, if there's a holiday, you get your holiday paid easily. You don't need to work. The second thing is work on weekends. For us, we have to we work five days. The following day, whether it's a Saturday or Sunday, it's an overtime. It's your wish. If you want to work, you will work. If you don't want, you can stay home. But other employees who don't have a union steward or a union member is that they have to be. It's the company policy, and they have to do it what they are told to do. So the most important that we gain from the union is that getting rights, a lot of rights, to teach others people they don't have. And I think most, some of them. My fellow Abraham, I'm going to explain to you more about it. And thank you for the time. My name is Abdurrahman Adam, and I work at Electrolux about, I was working at Electrolux about 10 years. Um, I don't have a lot of experience about the union. But I'm new. Uh, I'm union steward about a month or two months. I'm still learning more. Um, but the experience I have when you are in union or without union is a huge difference. Um, something about happened to me past. Um, they helped me a lot. I think without the union, I wasn't work there at all. I lost my job, they fired for me. They see that I was right. And that's the most story of what happened to me. I don't want to talk about a lot of things, but how it happened, but um, to be honest, And Electrolux, they have, when we start the first, I'm the few people who start in Somali community for Electrolux. A lot of things happen because they don't know our culture. Um, and also, we are Bolivian and Muslim. Um, there is a lot of miscommunication happened over there, but the union and the company, they fixed that problem. Um, now, when, you, when we were in Africa, uh, the way we work and the way we, uh, we work in America is so totally different. But when we come here, we learn a lot. Uh, now a lot of people, now we understand that 
our job. And the company, they understand us now. So everything seems to be good. Because sometimes, like, when somebody telling you you cannot sit or you have to stand eight hours, we don't use in Africa. Like, we shout to them. Is this abuse or what? <laughs> but now we understand that um, you have to follow the rules of the company. And sometimes they said you cannot pray. But we pray five times, we are Muslim. But they, you see your supervisor standing in front of you saying, hey, I'm talking to you. But we don't talk when we pray. We keep praying until we think we can answer your question. So all that thing, it happened, but the company, they fixed it. Now they let us pray. And we play five times. But we only play one time in the company. So two times in the company. So in my opinion, everything seems to be good. And we work together now as a community in the company. And the union, um, that's what is between us and the company. We are the union. And Hi, my name is Colleen Mabikuni. I am the uh, Union Business Representative for the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, and I represent members at Electrolux and other areas. Um, these two men here to my left are what we call the front line in a union. They are the stewards on the floor, um, upholding our contract. When there is an issue, they go to a shop chair. Um, and then the shop chair will contact me or they will stop in my office and I will help them in any way I can. That's my job. I like my job. It's fun. Um, what the union really does is we represent the working people. And if there is an issue, um, such as Abdukhani spoke about a prayer issue at Electrolux, um, the union is there and we represent them and we do whatever it is we have to do to make sure that everyone's rights are upheld. Um, as far as the prayer issue, it's absolutely no different than the American Disability Act. If there was someone out there with a disability and, you know, someone didn't want to uphold their disability, we would fight for that also. And so we represent everyone and we fight as far, hard as we can to make sure everyone's rights are in force the way they're supposed to. Both just uh, like you were relating to me the other day about uh, some examples you know of workers in the Somali community in, in St. Cloud, uh, in Wilmer, uh, and elsewhere um, who don't have a union, how their work experience is different from your work experience as workers who have a union. Thank you, Professor. Uh, like now, as I mentioned, like some of the work areas, like let us, example, let me take like a gold plant. I have a family member who used to work in Goldman for us four years ago, like, although she didn't work for this year and a half now. She got fired because she asked for prayer. As, as you know that we have to pray five days, five times in a day, especially the one on the morning prayer, on the sunset prayer, actually it has a very little time, so like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. If you don't pray all that time, the prayer will pass you. So what happened one day, she was supposed to pray the morning prayer, and she was being told that you cannot leave the line. Even if you are given permission by the lead man or you are placed by supervisor, we don't care. You cannot leave the line, you can pray on your prayer. Right? And the prayer actually is 30 minutes, 45 minutes after the prayer. So she said that, no, I have to pray. She left the line, she asked the lead man to release her, and she went to pray. When she came back, she was being told that, hey, tomorrow night before you go to work, you have to step to the office. She went to the office the following night, she was being told that you're fired. From that day to now, she doesn't have any work, and there were almost, I think, those people who got fired, it's almost 50. And they don't have nowhere to go. If they, and I believe if they will have a union to send them, that market will have been solved.